Hey everyone and welcome to this video where I'll be presenting a couple of theories on what I believe lurks behind the shroud of mystery regarding Final Fantasy XVI, specifically the enigmatic kingdom of Villoud. For those of you who don't know me, I'm MJ Gallagher, a writer and huge Final Fantasy enthusiast, specialising in mythology that appears in the games. I have most recently released Norse Myths That Inspired Final Fantasy VII, which is a book that explores in detail the parallels between the Viking legends and the compilation. As mentioned, I'll be providing a bit of lore knowledge to help speculate on what the Kingdom of Valud in Final Fantasy XVI is. Um, I personally believe it's derived from Norse mythology, which was once the religious beliefs of the Vikings, and I'll present some evidence to that effect. Also, I predict Valud is the correct pronunciation, and I'll explain why a bit later in the video. Before we begin, I want to give a shout out to Viz at the Cosmo Canyon Observatory for his incredible breakdown on what we already know of Final Fantasy XVI and for inspiring this video. Now, Final Fantasy XVI was officially announced back in September of 2020. Uh, we know it's being produced by Naoki Yoshida, uh, the celebrated director of Final Fantasy XIV who is credited with turning around the fortunes of that title since its 2.0 overhaul, A Realm Reborn. Final Fantasy XVI is being developed by Square Enix's Creative Business Unit 3, who are responsible for Final Fantasy XIV as well, uh, so they will have a lot of familiarity with that game. Uh, this is very important to keep in mind, especially with regards to the Heavensward expansion, which I'll come back to. So anyway, what is Valorant? Well, in October 2020, Square Enix launched an official Final Fantasy XVI website, which provided some detail on a few of its main characters, its world, Valisthea, uh, the realms of its twin continents, and the Mother Crystals, which are a source of power. The continent's names are Storm and Ash, with the entirety of Ash in the East being controlled by the Kingdom of Villard. The official description of Villard is that the Kingdom's control of the continent has often been tested by the Orcs and other Beastmen who make their home there, but the current ruler of the realm, the dominant of an unnamed icon, has succeeded in quelling their rebellions. Using the power of the kingdom's mother crystal, Drake's Spine, this new king has built up a mighty army, with which he now seeks to test the borders of his neighbours. So, like the other named realms, Villard's emblem has also been shared. It depicts a six-legged horse bearing a shield with a spear on it. Um, this should immediately jump out for Final Fantasy fans, and is pretty much the key to what I'm about to discuss. The six-legged horse has appeared in most Final Fantasy titles since Final Fantasy V, as the steed of Odin, a character who has typically been a summon, or in the context of Final Fantasy XVI, an icon. The horse is called Sleipnir, named after the eight-legged stallion uh, of the mythical Odin, who was the chief of the Norse pantheon. Unlike his usual depictions in the Final Fantasy series, however, the Allfather was not a dark knight, but more a wandering sorcerer. That said, he is the owner of a magical spear, Gungnir, uh, which also regularly appears in the series. Based solely on the horse and spear of the emblem, I think it's fairly safe to conclude that the icon of Villard is Odin. If you wanted to make a further argument towards it, you could also look at the Mother Crystal that appears on the map of Villard, again known as Drake's Spine. A closer inspection of the artwork shows what seems to be storm clouds and shafts of lightning around the crystal. The obvious conclusion here might be to assume this relates to Rama, 
But Rama is not the only summon in the Final Fantasy franchise who is normally heralded by thunder and lightning. Across the series, Odin has traditionally been associated with death, but there have been titles where he is strongly connected to the element of lightning. Examples of this include Odin evolving into the Raiden, Magicite in Final Fantasy VI, where Raiden is the Shinto god of thunder. Odin emerges from a storm in the summon animations of Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII. He is also Lightning's personal idolin in Final Fantasy XIII uh, and attacks with the element of lightning. And a drastic change in the weather during Final Fantasy XIV signals the Odin Primal's approach in the Black Shroud. The storm around Drake's spine itself, in my opinion, therefore also indicates that Odin is the icon of Valard. As a side note, this has no real standing in terms of Norse mythology, as it was Odin's son Thor who was the god of thunder. So what other parallels can be drawn with Viking lore that might allow us to speculate on the details of the kingdom? As it turns out, there's quite a few. Um, these include the workings of the continent of Ash, uh, the location of Valard's capital, the nature of the region's mother crystal, and the kingdom's name itself. Again, I'd like to point out that the team developing Final Fantasy XVI also developed Final Fantasy XIV, which is full of elements derived from Norse mythology, especially in Heavensward. We can therefore assume that they have at least a basic understanding of it. Okay, so we'll look at the name first. Uh, you'll likely have noticed that I'm pronouncing it Valerd rather than Wallowhead, as it appears phonetically in the English translation of the website. The first three letters, W-A-L, is the Old English or Old Saxon equivalent of the Norse V-A-L, and all are pronounced Val. Given the medieval fantasy setting of the game, it's easy to argue that the Old English spelling has been considered here. The general Germanic term Val related to people who had been killed, but the Norse version was specific to warriors slain in battle. This is a very important concept because the Vikings believed that dying in glorious combat was the highest honour one could achieve, and those worthy enough would be chosen by divine shield maidens, the Valkyries, to join Odin's great hall in the afterlife, Valhalla. So straight away we see a connection between the Val part of Valard and its probable icon, Odin. As for the Erd part of Villard, this is difficult to pinpoint. Seeing O and E together in a Germanic word typically represents the Anglicization of the letter Er, as in Schrodinger's cat, but the letter itself does not appear in the English alphabet. It is absolutely worth highlighting though that the spelling of the kingdom changes from region to region. The actual German name is Valut, which is spelled W-A-L-U-T-H. The French version, however, uses the exact spelling you might expect of the Old Norse texts, which is V-A-L-R-D. If we account for possible Anglicization issues then, the Erd part of the Lord might loosely relate to the Norse term Odor. Odor was a trance-like state of battle frenzy also associated with Odin, which the fiercest Viking warriors would induce before a fight. Therefore, we can speculate that one interpretation of Villard's name refers to the battle frenzy of slain warriors. This may imply that the kingdom has a lust for war and its soldiers do not fear death. However, all that seems a bit abstract until you apply it to the description of the kingdom on Final Fantasy XVI's official website. The current ruler of the realm, the man in control of Odin, or perhaps vice versa, is amassing a mighty army with which he intends to test neighbouring borders. In Norse mythology, the Valkyries, the choosers of the slain, 
take those killed in combat to Valhalla, the Hall of the Slain, where they will enlist in Odin's afterlife army, the Einherjar. The purpose of the Einherjar is to train every day in preparation for Ragnarok, the Norse apocalypse. This then not only creates a comparison between the Einherjar and the army the King of Villard is assembling, it might present an insight into why he's really building it. We already know from official sources that Final Fantasy XVI's world of Valisthea is currently suffering from a mysterious plague called the Blight. Could it therefore be that just as Odin prepares the Einherjar for Ragnarok in Norse lore, Odin's dominant prepares Valerd's army for the catastrophic Blight? Just an idea I wanted to throw out there. The next thing I want to talk about is the location of Valerd's capital and its mother crystal. They both appear to be situated in a vast lagoon or bay, and the city may be either an island, actually on the coast, or even floating, such as Venice, Italy in real life, or by magical means. The lagoon or bay is bound to the south by coastline and to the north by a semicircular archipelago of islands. And the specific shape of the archipelago is of great interest because of how it encloses the body of water. I actually have two theories about this. Perhaps one is right or a combination is correct or I'm way off but it's been fun to speculate on. Okay, so here's theory number one. I think the semicircle of islands alludes to the incomplete wall around Asgard, the realm of Odin and the Aesir gods in Norse mythology. Early in the myth cycle, the gods hired an unnamed frost giant to build a secure barrier around the heavens. They agreed to his unreasonable fee because they didn't believe he could complete the task on time. However, when they saw how quickly the giant and his horse were erecting the wall, the gods panicked and sent Loki in to sabotage the build by luring away the steed by transforming into a mare. The giant missed the deadline and the wall remained unfinished. For his trickery though, the shape-shifting Loki fell pregnant to the giant's horse and gave birth to the greatest of all stallions. Sleep near, the same horse on Valor's crest. And that's just the basics. The incomplete wall around Asgard meant that it was susceptible at times to attacks by giants. This was also true of Midgard, the world of men. The Vikings, themselves very capable seafarers and thus heavily associated with water, believed Midgard was entirely surrounded by the ocean. In the wilderness beyond the walls of Asgard and Midgard lay Jotunheim, the home of the giants. In Viking lore, giants typically represented natural chaos, while the gods represented order. This lends itself to the guard part of Asgard and Midgard. The word itself meant wall or barrier or enclosure, such as those I've already spoken about but it was also used as a broader concept. Everything inside the guard was orderly or civilised, while everything outside the guard was chaotic or primitive. So this is where it gets interesting. Looking again at the world map of Valisthea, we can see that the lagoon or bay where the capital is located is on the northern coast of Ash. This implies the Kingdom of Valerd, or at least this part of it, is likely a seafaring nation, just as the Vikings were. As mentioned before, the semicircular archipelago around the bay may relate to the wall or enclosure enjoyed by Asgard and Midgard in the Norse tales, especially in respect to the Vikings believing an impassable ocean lay beyond the barrier. The description of Villard in the Final Fantasy XVI website 
also says that its control over the continent of Ash has often been tested by the orcs and other beastmen who live there, but that the king has succeeded in quelling their rebellions. It is quite typical in fantasy media that orcs and or beastmen represent more primitive societies, just as the giants do in Norse mythology. As such, one could argue that the aggression shown by the orcs and beastmen living in the wildlands of Ash parallels that shown in legend by the giants of Jotunheim, the wilderness thought to exist beyond the borders of Asgard and Midgard. Furthermore, this bolsters speculation that the archipelago represents the hypothetical guard of Valur's capital because the chaotic, primitive forces of Ash dwell outside it. This suggests that Final Fantasy XVI might include a subplot about Valur becoming involved in a conflict on the continent of Storm, while simultaneously trying to deal with the attacks of the Beastmen. Stories in Norse mythology, such as the theft of Thor's hammer, or the kidnapping of Idun, guardian of the apples that kept the gods youthful, might even give us clues about the challenges the Beastmen will cause the kingdom. Before we move on to my second, considerably crazier theory, I'd like to quickly touch on the name of the continent. Anyone familiar with Norse cosmology may already be aware that the Nine Worlds were said to be connected by the World Tree, Yggdrasil. Unlike its counterparts in other North European cultures, Yggdrasil was not an oak tree, but rather an ash tree. However, this is just a coincidence, as testing the localised terms for the continent reveals that Ash's name does in fact relate to burned residue. What is worth noting though are the details of Ragnarok, the prophesied Norse apocalypse I mentioned earlier. At Ragnarok, it is foretold that the fire giants will ride to Asgard and after a lengthy battle with Odin and his Inherjar, their leader Surtur will scorch the Nine Worlds. The realm of men will sink into the sea, only to re-emerge as a bountiful place for the surviving humans to repopulate. The naming of Ash may refer to these once burned realms, given that the entire continent is ruled by Valard, whose capital happens to have been built in a coastal lagoon. This in turn might imply that the kingdom was once a much different place, and Ash was quite literally founded on the ruins of a previous civilization. So let's now move on to the final section of my speculative thoughts regarding Final Fantasy XVI's Villard. This one ties in very nicely to the Final Fantasy XIV expansion Heavensward, which, as I've already spoken about, was also developed by Square Enix's Creative Business Unit 3. During that game, the player becomes embroiled in a conflict between the dragons of the Dravanian Horde and the city-state of Ishgard. The primary enemy is the great worm Nidhogg, and the warrior of light assists in his defeat by successfully recruiting Nidhogg's brother, Hraesvelger, to their cause. These two are children of Midgard Sommer, a colossal ancient dragon who features in a separate storyline, and all three names are derived from Norse mythology. To quickly summarise where they came from, um, Vikings believed the universe was made up of the nine worlds connected by the world tree Yggdrasil. The roots of Yggdrasil went into three springs. Uh, the lowest of these was the poisonous spring of Felgenmir, located in Niflheim, which was part of the underworld. This is where the dragon Nidhogg lived. Conversely, in the uppermost branches of the heavens, perched an unnamed eagle. Nidhogg and the eagle were enemies and exchanged taunting messages via the cosmic squirrel, Ratatoskr, who would run up and down the trunk of Yggdrasil delivering these messages. It was a common motif in Indo-European cultures that the cycle of nature was represented by the god of the underworld, 
usually depicted as a serpent emerging from the depths, only to be chased down again by the chief sky god, himself depicted as an eagle. While this relationship does not apply to Odin, who was head of the Norse pantheon, but not a sky god, it can be seen in both the rivalry between his son Thor, god of thunder, and Midgard Sommer, the world serpent, and also in Nidhogg, the dragon of the underworld, and the eagle at the summit of Yggdrasil. Furthermore, while that specific bird is unnamed, there is a giant in the form of an eagle said to stand on the edge of heaven. When this eagle flaps his wings, it generates the wind that sweeps over the worlds, hence the connection with storms. And this eagle's name is Hreisvelger. So, in a roundabout way, Final Fantasy XIV represented the common motif of serpent versus eagle through the dragons Nidhogg and Hreisvelger. As for Midgard Sommer in Norse mythology, he is the giant linworm that lies at the bottom of the ocean, completely encircling the world by biting his own tail. At Ragnarok, he will come ashore and is destined to kill and be killed by Thor. And now that I've explained the mythological context, here's my theory. I think that the specific names of the Mother Crystals have a deeper meaning, which likely won't be revealed until Final Fantasy XVI is released. Considering the name of Drake's spine in isolation, you could think of it as a centre, or core, or trunk for said Drake. In terms of Norse cosmology, the spine, or trunk, of the Nine Worlds was of course Yggdrasil. As I spoke of earlier, the spring of Velgarmir, the dwelling of Nidhogg, was located beneath one of the world tree's roots, while in the heavens was Hreisvelgar, an eagle associated with storms. In Final Fantasy XVI's Villard, Drake's spine rises from a vast lagoon and at its height are storm clouds. Additionally, separate to my theory about the archipelago representing the walls around Asgard and Midgard, it may instead represent the body of Midgard Sorn. The very first piece of concept artwork that Square Enix shared for the game, which was at the time attributed to an unannounced project, was of Oriflam the capital city of the Holy Empire of San Brek. If you look closely at the bottom corner of the image, a silhouette of the protagonist Clive Rossfield can be seen, alongside a small wyvern. The presence of the wyvern here confirms that dragons exist in Valisthea. This is important because it's likely the development team will draw on similar ideas to those of Final Fantasy XIV Heaven's word. It is therefore my theory that if we are going to encounter a subplot or backstory concerning dragons like Nidhogg, Hreisvelgar or Midgard Sommer, it will most probably occur in Villard. To what extent though, only time will tell. So those are my speculations on what we might be able to expect from the Kingdom of Villard in Final Fantasy XVI based on Norse mythology. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have found this interesting and informative. If you would like to learn more about my examination of mythology in the Final Fantasy games, you'll find several articles on my dedicated Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash ffmythology. And please consider picking up a copy of my book, Norse Myths That Inspired Final Fantasy VII which is available to purchase in both paperback and digital formats on Amazon, and I'll put links to these in the description below. But until next time, take care. I'm MJ Gallagher, and I'll speak to you again soon.